Today on Hacktip, we're getting back to the basics with terminal environment customizations. And this episode of Hacktip is brought to you by Atlassian. Welcome to Hacktip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I am Shannon Morse, and today we are learning about the terminal environment and how you can customize the environment to fit your needs. Now, when you start up your terminal window, Bash is going to read startup files to figure out your default configurations. These different startup files are all written in Bash, a programming language, and they hold all the configurations for the terminal session. This tells the computer what the default environment is going to be and what kind of customizations you wanted to do for that environment. Any program that you run in the terminal will usually have some sort of configuration file, but sometimes those programs can also be customized with settings saved in the environment. It gets a little bit confusing. Now these are called environmental variables or environment variables and shell variables. So do you remember aliases? We covered that way back in the springtime or last year, it's been a while. <laughs> Go back to my previous hack tip to learn about aliases. But an alias is a setting that lives in the environment. So shell variables are from bash and environment variables are pretty much everything else that can be customized. So if you want to see what variables are being stored in your environment, let's go over to my computer. You can type print env. And you can also do that print env in a text doc if you wanted to. But if you scroll up and down, you'll see that this shows you what variables are currently set for the environmental variable. So you can also type something like, let's see, we have log name over here. So I could type print env log name, and that should print out snubs. So it shows me exactly what that variable is up here. You could also do the same thing for user, for display, log name, like I mentioned, pretty much every variable that's set in there to get a specific variable. Alternatively, if you just type set, this will show you the environment variables and shell variables in alphabetic order, as well as some code. So here way at the top of the set command are all of those variables set in alphabetical order, which is actually pretty nice. Now aliases are a little bit different. You have to search for those separately from set or print env for print environment because neither of those will show you aliases. So if you want to search specific aliases for your computer, you can type alias and that is going to show you any aliases that you currently have set for your computer. So for example, I have one here set for alias internets, and that is going to scan specifically for this network variable. Okay, so you remember how I mentioned startup files. So back to those startup files, to view a startup file and their custom variables, you can go to your home directory and you can type lstacA. So lstacA will list all the files, including ones that are hidden. So ones that are hidden usually start with a period at the front. So if I did that in my home directory, I'm going to see dot adobe dot bashrc dot profile along with a whole bunch of other hidden files but if i just type ls i'll just see the ones that are generally viewable to the user if i type cat dot profile so i'm catting the profile file that's going to open up this profile file and i can see what the startup file looks like and how it works and this is all in Bash. Okay, so now that you have a general idea of what the envir environment is and how you can actually access those startup files, we're gonna take a quick break, but we will be back with modifying some startup files in just a little bit, so stay tuned. Today, nearly anything is possible, and if we can dream it, teams can build it. So how do you bring everyone together to create what's next? The solution is teaming up with Atlassian, the makers of collaboration software that lets teams work and communicate better together instead of separately. It makes sense. You can assign, track, and manage tasks for any project, no matter how complex. That's the clarity of Jira. Create and share content, organize results, and bring team members up to speed with the flexibility of Confluence. Instant message or video chat with your team from any device with the freedom of hip chat, and test, review, and manage code in real time. That's the power of Bitbucket. 
you know that we do a lot of coding around here. I've used Bitbucket time and time again, especially with learning how to use Bash, for example, to share code snippets back and forth with my coworkers because they have been coding a lot longer than I have, so it's great to get their feedback and I can make better segments for you guys whenever I'm doing my hack tips. You can visit Atlassian.com to learn more and see how Jira, Confluence, HipChat, and Bitbucket give your team everything you need to organize, discuss, and complete shared work. Atlassian, helping teams everywhere team up to create what's next. Atlassian.com. We're back and it's now time to start modifying those startup files. Now you will most likely be changing the .bashrc or the .profile file. Now you can use the text editor to edit these. Uh, Gedit is one of them, Vi, Nano, or just a few of the text editors available on Linux machines and any of them will work if you wanna edit a startup file. Now to edit the .bashrc file, First, you wanna create a backup with the cp command. So cp is copy, if you remember my previous hack tips about the Linux terminal. And then you wanna use your favorite text editor to open it in the terminal. So for me, I'm gonna use nano because it's easy. So I'll go over to my computer and you'll notice too, if I hit ls a, I've already created a backup file here. So I'm not gonna go over that because you should already know it. And I'm gonna open nano.bashrc. And I, you can do tab complete if you want to. Okay, so now we have our bashrc file open and I'm just gonna page down all the way to the end. And I've already put my edits in here when I was testing this out, but go ahead and write this example to your bashrc file at the bottom. Uh, type umask space 0002 and then export space hist control, so history control equals ignore dupe, so it's ignoring duplicates. Export hist size equals 1000. So the reason for this is because if you go into your history file, generally it's only going to save the last 500 lines that you've completed as commands in your terminal session. So by doing this, you can actually customize how many uh, different lines that you're going to see in your history command. So for this example, we're using a thousand. So back to this file, alias L period equals. So I'm making a new alias and this is going to alias L period to lstacd uh, dot wildcard. So it's gonna look for any hidden files and then the color is going to be auto. And then alias LL is going to be lstacl color equals auto. And let's go ahead and save that with Control O, file named right, bash RC, yes, enter, and Control X to exit. So that first line is going to give the file read write permissions for user and group, and then everyone else just get read permissions. I already went over the second line about duplicate commands, and then the third line about history. The two aliases are going to be changed. Now, once you save out of your document, you wanna type source.bashrc to make bash review the new changes, because it will only read that bashrc file every single time that you open up a new terminal session. So I'm gonna type source, dot bash rc hit enter i won't see anything on standard out but i can test this by typing ll or l period and it looks like they both work and then i can type history and you'll notice here that i really haven't done much since i reinstalled ubuntu but i'm getting there i'll let you know when i get to a thousand so I have used some of the source material for this hack tip from the Linux command line published by No Starch Press. It's also available online as PDF. I don't go over every little detail of how these work and exactly what the environment is. So if you are new to the terminal, I highly suggest getting a copy for yourself. It's a really, really great read and kind of geeky. I just, I, I love it. It's a great book. Now let me know what you guys think. You can send me a comment below or you can email us tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. We just made an open VPN segment. It was really, really fun. And with that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Remember to trust your technolust. <laughs>